Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of All Things Either. Today I'm going to be discussing how to load multiple input files in the same database. This is useful if you're analyzing a complex target and you want to have bird's eyes view of all the interconnected components. Now this is not something built in into Ida, but we have all the facilities that will enable us to achieve such a goal. In fact, one can write a nice plugin and add this functionality into Ida. Now, I've been asked this question on Twitter before, so I take this opportunity to talk about this topic. With that, let's get started. Loading several input files into the database is not necessarily something new. As I said, we can have multiple tricks to achieve that. In fact, there's a blog post here in Hexrays since 2005 where it references the PE utilities by Alti Goodmanson. This is a set of scripts. I remember using it even long before the blog post and those scripts were created around June 1999 and kept on being improved until year 2002. So we're gonna talk about this approach in general and then I'm gonna show you another approach. And finally, I'm gonna talk about high level ways we can write a better plugin that works beyond just PE files. So let's run the PE scripts and simulate multiple input files into the same database. In order to use the PE scripts referred by the blog post here, we cannot use the latest IDA. The earliest IDA I can use is 5.0 and that will be able to use those IDC scripts. The reason for that is IDA went through lots of refactoring and IDC function names changed. So we're gonna use IDA 5.0. So I have IDA 5.0 here and for now, if we look at the segments, we only have just the stuff that the loader brought from the input file. What about the dependencies? So if we open the imports window, we have here, for example, crypt32, kernel32, qt, and so on. But what about if we're interested in additional inputs, for example, kernel32 and tdll and so on? That's where we can use PE scripts scripts files. So here we have a bunch of scripts and the main one is the PEDLL. So if you look at PEDLLs, the gist of it really is it will load the dependencies. It will start asking a bunch of questions. It has supporting files. For example, it has pesections.idc. This will let it, for example, interpret the sections. So we've spoken about the PE file format. We should be familiar with what's going to happen. The script here will parse the import table of our input file for every imported DLL it will load it so it will parse its header grab its sections and inject them into the database and that's the logic behind the whole thing so this is really what it will be doing so let's put it into action real quick so here i'm gonna load the idc script so here i'm gonna pick the pedlls and run it and now that script is running so do you want to specific load the dll no let's have it go through the import table and it will figure out the ls and ask us one by one so now it's doing its things and here it is now let's just let it finish uh no do you want to load wintrust for example where is wintrust can i specify wintrust for it so here do you want to load crypt 32 qt widgets etc etc so I'm gonna cancel it for now, but we have it load a bunch of dependencies. Now IDA's analyzing, we can see here it's loading more stuff. And what the script did really is simply load the input file. So it went through every dependencies I asked it to bring in. It parsed it, it parsed the sections, parsed its imports. So here, for example, creates new sections for crypt32 for every section it found the location in the database and did the whole logic behind it now of course there will be some discrepancies while we did bring in the code of a dependency into the database there is no direct cross references yet and this is a limitation we can overcome by writing some code so for example in the imports window so if we go to the imports window here and we did bring in crypt so here for example crypt cert get name this one here if we check the cross references or we try to follow it it's not gonna take us to the crypt section here so here there is the implementation here we brought it in 
but there's no relationship and this is just a limitation we can simply add a cross reference as well by improving the script so when we follow this it takes us to the actual implementation but for now if we really want the implementation we can go to the functions window and try to find it and it might be located in the crypt section here and this is the actual body of a dependency for example but as i said we can simply go to the cross reference window and add a user cross reference and we can specify the from to the from is from the import table and here is the implementation location and we will have an artificial cross reference between the two you can be creative on how you have your plugin implement that multi database facility so this is the pe script the logic is simple as i explained just bring in more stuff into the database and use some API calls such as create a new segment, put bytes into the database, and some auxiliary code to interpret the input file we're bringing in. So here we're talking the loader logic, file loader logic. Since we know how to parse PE files, we can implement that logic and employ the IDA SDK functions to put everything together. Now, if you're using modern IDA, while we don't have a plugin or a built-in functionality to bring in dependencies we can leverage a debugger trick that lets us bring in dependencies as well but we will need the debugger so let me show you what i'm talking about so again i'm gonna take an input file here for demo purposes this is the latest ida and now if we look at this Control s to see the segments we only have the input file itself not the dependencies so how can we bring dependencies? So the dependencies usually manifest in the import table. And suppose we want the crypt32 dependency. We want to bring in the whole of that dependency into the database. So we're going to use the debugger trick. I'm going to simply start debugging and wait at the right time when that dependency is in memory. So for example, let me put a breakpoint here at the start and let it run. Now it's suspended. If we inspect the modules window, from the debugger here window and we simply select the modules list we have all the dependencies loaded so if i'm interested in crypt32 i have to do is like find it for example this is it and we already spoke about those stuff in previous videos so this is all the stuff inside it all the symbols debug names as we call them and so on but what I'm interested in is bringing that dependency. So to bring this dependency, all we have to do is simply right click and analyze module. Now what this will do behind the scenes, it will take a snapshot of that module and bring it into the database. Almost like as if we did the PE scripts approach or we wrote our own script to bring more bytes from uh, input into the database. So let's do the analyze module. So here analyze module takes a snapshot and analyzing it. If you restart the debugging session, whatever you brought into the database, two things. It will be stored right now as a snapshot, but if that target changes or moves and so on, you will have issues. So now we're gonna capture it at that image base. And so remember, this could be an issue if we don't rebase everything, if we rerun. So if we're gonna do this statically and just capture it, stop debugging, and never run the debugger again. This approach works great. If we're gonna keep rerunning it, we have to add an extra logic not built in into either. We have to simply rebase script32 as well and move it to wherever it is in memory. So for now, let's assume we're just gonna keep doing static analysis. So here, right click on script32 and analyze. And now Ida took a copy of it. So it would be useful as well to load the debug symbols. If there are debug symbols, it's great so now we have 5000 symbols let's stop debugging and if we look at the segments because we did analyze module either captured the whole image size of that module so this would be the header and those would be the subsequent sections they're not properly named because this functionality is generic so it works under any debugging target whether you're debugging mac ios uh, linux so they're generic if you really want to have this 
much more sophisticated, you have to implement something better. So let's rename here to header and this one should be text for example and so on. Of course as I said you can go refer to the input file on this can automate the whole process. So same limitations as before if we go to the imports window and go to crypt, crypt cert name string for example say there is no cross reference to the implementation. Let's find the implementation so we can open the functions window and hopefully or the names window and hopefully Ida finished the analysis. Okay so it did reach that point it's still analyzing but it did take that symbol and we have the name from the debug names and we will also have the stuff that the pdb brought in so some stuff not necessarily in the export directory and this is the implementation if we cross reference here most of the cross references are from addresses within crypt32 itself and not from the input file that limitation can be resolved by opening the cross reference window as i said and adding cross reference and just making it like that and let's say it's a jump cross reference now i have a cross reference if i press ctrl j cross references from here it should take me to the implementation for example so this is the only outgoing cross reference so if i follow it here jump cross references from here takes me to the implementation now if i cross reference on the implementation it has its own set and finally as i said if this moves, IDA will not move it automatically. If we rerun this target, IDA will rebase the main part that it knows about because it went through the file loader and remember the fix up data and so on. It doesn't know anything about this. We can probably patch in fix up data. We can intercept the rebasing event and move the segments accordingly, but we have to write some custom code for that. All right, that's it for today. What we covered was approaches and discussions and challenges related to bringing additional dependencies into the same database. We spoke about semi-automatic methods, we spoke about the theory, and also how we can complement that by writing custom code to handle, for example, relocation of the dependency segments, potentially applying automatic signatures as well, things that IDA does on the main input file, adding the fix-up data as well, and other things that the main loader does the, and IDA doesn't do. So I believe with a bit of refactoring from Hexraise's side, this could be a nice and welcome major feature in future versions of IDA. Okay, thank you and I'll see you next time.